Hello everyone, it's DA here. Hope you guys are doing great. Hope you are doing amazing. Now, before the sacrifice quest, there had been this huge contest of power that I've noticed within Warframe. And this also came from me playing a lot of the cinematic quests about 10, 20, 30 times because of 10 diaries and other reasons. And of course, this contest of power was something that happened within the origin system. And of course, this is a result of the fall of the Orokin because the Orokin were at the very top and there were this huge power figure. Everybody listened and answered to them alone. But now with everything that has unfolded after the sacrifice quest, what we now know, a new challenger has entered the arena or should I say an old power structure is rising again or it is awakening again. Now, I say this because I've seen the infested as more of the powerhouse within the system, and this is all due to their overwhelming numbers, the fact that they can easily replicate from almost anything. The infestation is one of those things that I see more as a molecule or as an air when it comes to them infecting anything, and if they're able to find any available host, they're going to attach to it. It could be organic, it could be machine, it could even be maybe some kind of a software if possible, they can infect the cephalon weave. But of course, that is a guess. I don't know if that is possible yet. Now, that is one of the things that makes the infested really powerful. That itself is one of the reasons why I have this feeling because the infested can infect the Orokin, they can infect the Grenier, the Corpus, everything except the Sentience. And that is one of the things that we know based on the Warframe lore. So I'm sure that you guys are asking, well, how could they have been the most powerful thing within the system if they cannot infect the sentience? Wouldn't the sentience be the most powerful if the infestation cannot take over the sentience? Well, if you ask that very question, then you are very right to think so. My reason, however, is due to the fact that the sentience are highly depleted in numbers. Every tactician knows that intelligence wins battles for you, it's all about that game of chess, but we are also dealing with a numbers game right here. And that's one of the things that I see with the sentience so far, the fact that they are very deep, they are highly depleted in numbers, and the infested can easily overrun the sentience. Though they cannot be infected, but they can still be overwhelmed and broken down based on that mass. Now, I will say that the sentence have finally arrived, and the main reason for that is that if any of you guys have ever gone deeper into Warframe lore, you will know that the sentence suffer from the lack of numbers. And that is why replication and reproduction is very important to them. This is one of the things that was at the conclusion of the old war and that is very important to know. And since we now know that Ballas is working with the sentient, this means the sentient will be coming back in full force, an entire civilization, an entire faction is going to be coming back in full force. Ballas created the Warframes and there is no doubt that he is involved or knows the in and outs of the sentient creation as well. The sacrifice lets us know that he had been working with the sentient right before the Tenno uprising. So he has had millennia to help them rebuild an entire faction. The sentient have been building this massive world. You know, the sentient outpost that we've been talking about. So here is where the problem arise. How does an entire system fight against legions of highly adaptable forces, which are the sentient? They are hands down the most powerful, more powerful than any other faction within the system right now. And unless each faction develops a means of survival, there is no way out of this. Now, this also means that everyone will start building relationships and allies. Some of those factions may start working together in some cases. And we already know that the corpus process technology that can affect sentience. But what about the Grenier? We all know that the Grenier are hard-headed. They are difficult, stubborn and they will not go down without a fight. Now, the kicker with the Grenier, however, is the fact that Ballas can still use his Orokin influence over the Grenier Queen. And if that becomes successful, then it will lead to a division within the Grenier ranks as well, because I'm sure not everybody within the Grenier will want to follow Ballas into battle or want to side with him. And I doubt that Captain Vor will side with Ballas as well. And I also doubt that Vehek or some of the other big bosses will side with Ballas as well. And as a result of that, 
those few bosses will probably form their own separate pseudo grenier armies and the same might even go for some of the other mercenaries and some of the other small bosses like kayla or some, maybe even maybe the gushrek 3 they may end up going around doing their own thing becoming independent just hunting people just for fun and for sport now of course the grenier in my own opinion will be the first to be internally broken after the rise of the new superpower and i believe that eternal will be okay because most of the Tenno have a similar goal and most of the syndicates will also have a similar goal when it comes to fight against the sentience. And as far as the corpus is concerned, the corpus is more than likely going to replace those who disagree with them with sentries and slaves. So the corpus really won't have a struggle when it comes to the power structure. Now I can foresee a great war coming within the origin system. A war more massive than before, more massive than the old war. And it will be something that starts with the new age, the new rise of the sentience. Ballas could fully transfer his own consciousness into a machine and become a full sentient. And at this stage in the game, the only enemy that seems to bring the most challenge are going to be sentient. And if the progression is followed as expected, we will have a whole sentient invasion missions just like we already do with the Grenier, the Corpus, and the Infested ones. But anyways, that is going to be my take on the current faction relations and where it might lead us in the future. But as usual, I would like to hear your take on the faction positions. What do you think? Who do you think is the strongest? And what do you think will happen from this point? Because we saw Ballas get stabbed at the end of the sacrifice. And some of us thought he was dead, but based on the way he looked, he is not dead. And more than likely, they're probably going to transfer his consciousness into a sentient, which is something that is possible. But let me know what you think down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel for more Warframe. And as always, it is DA signing out. I'll see you guys in the next one.